Okay, thought I would do a little tutorial on templates. I think there's a few issues with the templates, but I'll show you a few different ways to use them and kind of how they're used. Like for example, here is I have a panel. I put an FSM on it and it has a get position. I extract the X and the Y. I get the mouse positions. I do a little operation here and I make some offsets. Uh, there's nothing in the end drag. And I get mouse Y on the drag and I subtract it from one of the offsets. And the same with the X. I create a vector and I set position to it. And that just that just makes it so like if you just get position and set position it snaps to the anchor and I don't want that. You can do it, but see how this one drags smoothly, like I can grab it by the corners and drag it, right? So I can move it around, it's all nice and pretty. So, say I wanted to make a template of this. I could right click, save template, draggable window, <coughs> right? Okay, so we want to use that template, sure. Now say I create I don't know, we'll say an image, and I'll give it a little sprite, make it pretty, and I create another canvas, or a panel, uh, let's not have that whole size of everything, you know, stick it like this, maybe we'll change the color just for something different, so I have these couple things, so now I, I could literally just go FSM, and um, <coughs> draggable window. You know, this guy here, I could add an FSM. Draggable window. And those templates are now just, I can move this guy, move this guy, move those guys. Right? The, the, the template runs just the same way as it did before. If I come out of play mode, you can see, like, there's nothing there. It's, it's just... A, a, just the templates so that's kind of one way you can do it um, the other thing is say I have <coughs> a system and normally you, you have your variables here right and say I have one called mag and we'll have a vector three. So normally you can have these inputs and outputs and these feed into, those feed into templates, these feed out of templates. That, well, that's the intention. There's a couple issues with those. So let's put a little simple move and a axis vector right and let's just store the vector store the magnitude give it the character controller do the V right <coughs> so very very simple we have just a simple cube moving right nothing special about that all right, so what if we create uh, a little piece of logic here? Um, let's let's get material. Actually, no. Uh, let's do it this way. Let's get. FSM float. So we know this guy has a float in an FSM called Meg. Let's store that down in this template. Um, <coughs> so anything you put the template on, it's going to be looking for this. And let's float compare. And if 
m is a greater than 0.2 let's change some color and if we're copy and paste and if we are less let's just go back so it's just going to go back and forth based on that magnitude now while we're in here let's do a weight for i don't know we'll say half a second and we'll give this just a finished and it can use the finished and over here let's um color you know what let's make a variable let's let's make a an array called colors and let's make another called color and but color let's stick that in the output so in here colors it is type of color you know we'll give it four and just give it some random colors nothing special here something like that and then over here we're going to array get random from the colors store into color finish come back here that's it that's all it's going to do so i'm going to save template jay can you turn that down Right, so now I'm gonna get this guy that we just made that on, delete him, we don't want him. And over on this guy, I'm gonna run FSM. And I want him to run this guy. Now you don't have to, if you want, you could just make, you can make an FSM say here, and I could stick it here as well. And it would do the exact same thing. But I only want this one FSM and I want colors. So there's going to be our, our color that we get back. Uh, this shouldn't need to be every frame. Uh, I can explain why after. So let's get material. So we're going to get an instance of our material. And then over here we are going to set material color so of our instance material we're going to use that color every frame All right so as long as we're moving this this thing should be flickering colors because of the template right so it's randomly choosing colors now as long as we're moving and if I stop moving it doesn't choose it any more colors I start moving again it chooses colors again <clears throat> and that's the template doing that if we look at it and it's outputting this color it's, right if I go show, I can see that actually physically happening. So that's kind of one way to do those. I'm going to delete that. We don't care about it. I'm going to delete those. We don't care about it. One of the other ones I, I really like to use templates for is say we have, let's get rid of all this, and let's add a nav mesh. Because I deal so much with AI, right? <clears throat> we could easily have one saying, um, "Let's get position." You know, this is our current position, and let's random float. Let's get two of those. Let's go. I don't know, negative fifteen. 15, store that as X, negative 15, 15, store that as Z, and vector 3, add X, Y, Z, 
move to the bottom, current position, add X, add Z, right? And now set destination. Here and let's use current position now, and then let's I don't know, let's do a wait. Oh, three seconds maybe to a finish, and we'll just do another wait maybe to another finish, and go back and just keep going over and over and over again, right? So save template as wander all right <clears throat> so now we have that we have wander now let's add um, <clears throat> let's add one that we a variable called target and it comes as an input and we just agent set destination as game object to target. All right, let's just save that one as chase. All right, so now I'm going to get rid of those. And put it at FSM. So now here I can. Say I can run site or something like that here. I'm just going to fake it um, by having a site game object. I'll stick it over here. So is null. So if site is null, then we're going to go do our wander. And if it's not null, go do the chase. Right, and I could probably just copy that. Okay, uh, so how do we want to do this? Let's do, let's go like this. Let's say here we go there, here we go there, get rid of the chase here, get rid of the wander here. So if it's null, we go to our wander state. If we're here and it's not null, we go here. So here, now we can run FSM. And so if, if we're in our wander, we're just going to do our wander. And if we're over here, run FSM, do chase, and it's going to want that target. So there we have it. So if I now bake all right so we take this guy let's just stick him over here and come over here and hit play so <clears throat> he should be just he should just go into his wander state right because the site is null Oh, he's in his chase state. All right, let's go put that up there. Nah. So he's doing his wander, right? And he's just going to randomly now cre create waypoints and go there. So if I were to give him a site like this cube, he all of a sudden goes to this one and he should oh you know what we need to edit that one just slightly set this as a start and let's do a next frame event Now we just edit that template, and that's the, that's that's really the the power of the templates is they uh, 
are great for you put them on there you can just edit the template and it changes everything right so we go back over here and I should just be able to drop him in there and he should just go to the chase I don't even know where that cube is oh well that's going to cause issues no wonder he's not chasing we got to put the cube on the nav mesh all right now let's try that so he's wandering you know he has a sight you know maybe it's an overlap cast or whatever but he picks up the cube and he goes into his chase state all right I go and I get rid of this cube all right we select none he goes back to his wander state so you can really it, it the, the the templates are really cool for AI because you can create these kind of different uh, behaviors almost and and you can run a bunch of these all at once too right you can run a few different ones and have them output different things and input into each other kind of idea but that's that's kind of another way there's just they're a beautiful way to uh, have these things run oh we have an issue with this one He wants to go, but he can't go, and we're not too sure why. I broke my AI. I probably should have told him to stop and restart his pathing. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's kind of one way you can you can do it, and if you have. I'll show you another thing. What's FSM? Uh, so we could let's let's get a a weapon to stuff it in here, and let's. Oh, I should have should have done that differently. Weapon. So if we have a weapon, let's get bone um, let's go right hand so that's our right hand let's create let's create our weapon parent to the right hand spawn point right hand like that Okay, now let's go over to this weapon and input it. And let's save this thing as a template. And get rid of it. And let's, I don't let's even have it over here. Let's create another one of these. And spawn weapon. So he wants to spawn a weapon, and we, we have a weapon. Now I can just switch weapons. Let's just let's use a club now. All right. So we go over, I stuff that in there, and he should now have. I, mean, I, I granted I didn't line anything up, but there he, now we have a club in the right hand, and that's because. Um, this FSM oh, okay well I put it in the wrong spot whatever it still worked right so this guy here um, he, he got the owner of this template which is the goblin his right hand created this club into that right hand Right, so there, there's kind of one cool thing that you can do, things like that with it. Um, I think one of the other cool things is 
you could you could really use it I mean okay granted there is um, there's actions for this but this might give you an idea as well position one and position two and we'll have a float distance and the uh, that'll be an output input input we'll see if I can get the inputs working properly so let's do a weight nope oh, lower tundra and I'm clicking everything all crazy and go over here after one second we need to actually give that event and let's vector 3 operator uh, position 1 position 2 distance stores distance and come back over here and let's save that template yes and close and get rid of that all right so let's say now let's now let's stick it over this guy so here we have let's put him there and let's do run FSM again this time we'll do oh did I not name it this time did I screw that up yeah I screwed that up but anyway so now we can take position one and position two and we get a distance All right so let's get position so we have the owner that could be one every frame move to the top get position of site every frame and that can be two and then we can just in plug those in here ba -doop, ba -doop. and we should get a distance right so first we're going to need to give it its its cube or else it won't be happy so we give it its cube and now we should be able to see there's there's a distance right we're giving it two vectors and it's doing a distance now it's not updating that distance and it should said uh, it, it, it's almost better when if you're doing that stuff to use the get FSM vector or get FSM float I find those to be a lot better than the inputs the, the inputs there's a little bit of an issue with it I've seen um, and the other thing is you can like say you do a wait you do this you can now do a finish FSM and it tells this thing to be done All right so now you can turn around and say okay well if we're up here if we have a finished event let's let's stop and if we stop let's just go down here All right so we he's running we give him his cube He's happy, he runs, he does that one second, does his distance check, and then he stops. And he fires off that event. Right, so that's that's another way you can use templates. Right, so they're, they're, they can be pretty handy um, with various things. Like I said, like, I, I find them really useful for AI, but they're also pretty handy if you're doing lots of uh, stuff. Like I said, like, I, I just, I love them for panels. Um, for making little behaviors I find them just to be so useful right because it's like oh I made this window and oh I just put it in and now I don't know like oh I gotta build that stupid freaking thing again oh wait I can just give it that and now all of a sudden you know he's draggable all of a sudden right nice and simple I don't have to, I don't have to think about it so that's that's kind of some templates like I said and they have 
they have the input and output I said now I've, 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 I've been have had issues with those but you can use the get FSM uh, you know floats and vectors and stuff and that seems to resolve that one issue right like if I go here um, turn him off oh. let's edit you know like we don't even need these things in the inputs instead get FSM vector 3 right we know the owner has an FSM called that and we know we have one for a name every frame and we know we have another one called two and let's not finish that right So now if I give it its cube, you know, I, I can go over and I can, I, should, I can see its distance changing using the get FSM variables. It just runs a lot better, I find. Um, but it, it's kind of a cool way that you can, it, it, it's almost, it almost feels like you can run, grant, you can just run different FSMs on here, but being able to control which FSMs run through different states is, is a pretty cool little feature to play with. Like I said, you can mix and match them and do various other things, right? Because technically I could take this distance and, you know, stuff it into this one or something like that. And you can do, you can create all these little different behaviors off of these, these run FSMs. So that is templates. All right.